Hi everybody, today I'm working on a 2006 Mini Cooper S. This car needs a new throttle body. And the way I know it needs a new throttle body is it has P1125, 1126, and 0638 codes. When you see all these codes together, typically it means your throttle body's gone bad. The owner of this car said that it stumbled on the freeway a couple of times. He was able to turn the car off, turn the car back on, and keep going. And then finally, it went into limp mode and he couldn't move the car forward. The throttle refused to respond to the accelerator pedal inputs. All Mini Coopers use a drive-by-wire type of uh, system for the throttle body. It's actuated via this motor servo thingy here, and it basically takes inputs from the accelerator pedal, which are interpreted by the engine computer, and that tells where the throttle plate should be. It uses two redundant systems to avoid runaway conditions, and if there's any discrepancy between the two systems, or if there's any discrepancy between the reported position of the throttle plate and the requested position, the car will throw codes and go into limp mode. You can find these pretty easily on eBay, both used and new. I'll put a link in the video description. This car has an automatic transmission, so the position of the throttle body is a little bit different than the manual, but the replacement procedure is pretty much identical. So we'll go ahead and get started, and I'm going to loosen the intake tube here from the air filter housing. This car is an aftermarket housing, but it's pretty similar for a stock. I'll need to get the snorkel out of the way. And then we can uh, pull and rotate, get the snorkel out of the way. I'll push down to pull back the clip for the ECU connection. On a manual transmission, this clip, uh, this clip is gonna be pointed in this direction. There's one more clip down here for the bottom of the air tube. Just gonna pop it off with a screwdriver. And I wiggle and this kind of comes out of the way. There's a breather hose on the side here. This is an automatic transmission, so there's an additional hose going to the transmission. Um, if you can't disconnect these, they're generally flexible enough. You can kind of flex it out of the way. And then I'll use a bungee cord to hold it up out of the way. So now we can see the throttle body here. There's gonna be four 10 mil bolts holding it in place. And there's gonna be a bracket as well attaching it to the bell housing. And you just need to loosen the bolts and you don't need to remove the bracket. We'll take four of these 10 mil bolts out. Then I'll pull the bolts out using a magnet tool. Looks like I can wiggle it out without loosening this bracket here, so that's easy enough. This is held on by a single-use crimp uh, on th the automatic car. On the manual cars, this is usually a pinch, pinch clip. Kind of looks like this one here, except smaller, which is reusable. This shouldn't be on terribly tight, and I don't have a replacement clip, so I'm going to see if I can just loosen this enough to get it off. And then I've got a pinch tool to uh, tighten it again. That should be loose enough. There we go. I've got a crimp tool here, which I'll be able to use to retighten that little uh, clip. I'll put a link in the description where you can pick up this tool up. So there's the old throttle body. And we got the new one here. I'll put this tube back on and I'll crimp it back down using my crimp tool. And we'll wiggle it back into place. There's a couple little bumps on the plastic inlet tube. You want to make sure that those are engaged. And we'll put the bolts back in. I'm going to try to reuse this clip here for the air tube. We'll wiggle it back on there. And they aren't too bad to get back on as long as you have a pair of pliers that have a real sharp edge to the teeth. The hard part's going to be getting the correct angle. And if you can't make it work, you can always just use a big hose clamp. Let me try with a pair of bent needle nose pliers. There we go. Got it on. And don't forget to plug in the electrical cable again. If you don't, you'll get a different code and the car will refuse to move. We'll reconnect the upper tube. We'll put the snorkel back on. 
And if you kind of rotate it counterclockwise, it usually goes on pretty good. It might be easier to do this before you connect the hose, but I forgot. There we go. And we'll put the inlet tube back on. This tube has one of these clips as well, so this will be easy to put on. Basically, you just squeeze it and it snaps on. So that's all the mechanical work, but we're not quite done yet. We still need to talk to the computer. First, I'll clear the fault codes. And then I'm gonna go into special function and I'm gonna reset throttle adaptations. I recommend that you reset the adaptation for the throttle body. Uh, if you don't have the tool to do this, I suppose the car would probably run okay, but uh, I highly recommend you do this. I'll put a link in the description to uh, some tools that are able to perform this operation. I'll turn the key off to allow the car to write the, set, write the settings. I'll turn back on. Okay, so it looks like the throttle body is responding to the accelerated inputs. I'll take the car for a test drive and uh, hopefully the codes will be gone. But basically that's all there is to it. That's how to replace the throttle body on a Generation 1 Mini Cooper. Let me know if you have any questions. Click like, share, and subscribe. Thanks for watching and bye-bye.